Okay, we ready? First snow today. Got out there and shoveled. It was, it was like two inches, not even two inches of snow. So, but I came in and uh, I got I got hot chocolate because because you earned it. <laughs> I earned it. Connectors, what's up? DK here. Hope you're having a great day. Happy first Friday of January 2017. And uh, since it's Friday and I haven't done this in a while, I am going to uh, answer some questions from you uh, from the mailbag. So from my email address right here or others have sent me on Twitter right here. Uh, you can ask me questions about anything in the nonprofit sector or small business or the connection economy or anything really. And uh, I answer your questions. So here we go. How long have you been a nonprofiteer? I'd like to say my entire adult life. When I was in college, I was in a music fraternity, Kappa Kappa Psi, and we did music and community service projects all over Syracuse and the surrounding Onondaga County. And then I worked for nonprofits or consulting firms that worked on behalf of nonprofits. So I'd say my entire adult career. What made you become a speaker, a consultant for the nonprofit sector? For the love of the game, baby. Plus, I. I like to talk in public. What musical instrument do you play? I started playing the trumpet when I was in fourth grade, and now I'm trying to trying to learn guitar. But I, I know three chords. I I basically can only play the Ramones. That's not bad, but I'd like to learn a little bit more than that. What are your thoughts on pilot programs? So I think what you mean by this is not pilot program like a start of a new program. It's the first time. It's a test drive pilot. I think what you mean is pilot payment in lieu of taxes, which a lot of municipalities are asking nonprofits to consider giving dollars to their city to help support the city budget. The thinking being nonprofits don't pay property tax. And so in lieu of paying a property tax, they're asking nonprofits to kick in some money to a city's government budget. So uh, I, I'm very conflicted by this because I think, uh, I think pilots have been talked about in a too simplistic of way. Uh, and that's how they've justified how they've done it. For example, if you're a large nonprofit institution, like a college or a uh, hospital or something, uh, taking money out of your budget and sending it to your local municipality uh, makes good business, makes good sense, and is affordable for you. But uh, if you are, say, a homeless shelter or a small art gallery or a uh, charter school or some other thing where your budget may be tighter and you might not be able to do it, uh, it's very difficult to suggest that uh, that makes a lot of sense for the nonprofit in terms of its budget. And also the other part of this that really I have a problem with is the pilot suggesting that just putting that money to the to the city it justifies a, a nonprofit being in the city uh, sort of cuts away. And I, I did a video on this before sort of cuts away a little bit of the justification of how strong the nonprofit sector is to a community. Uh, yes, we don't pay property tax uh, in the nonprofit sector as a federal law uh, that is uh, then sometimes moved around with this pilot program on a local lo local level. But think about how many jobs are created by the nonprofit sector and how many employee taxes are paid because people are working at nonprofits. And those nonprofits in, in communities, then those people have disposable income to go out and shop and go to local restaurants and bars and uh, you know putting money back into the economy through the economic development, through economics. Uh, to suggest that the nonprofit sector is not paying inside of a community, it's, a, it's not really it's not really accurate, so I'm sort of lukewarm on the on the pilots. I, but I'd, I'd rather different alternatives than just simply saying, "Hey, kicking some money to our budget." Favorite beverage? Really? Do you like writing grants? Well, nobody really likes writing grants. It's a necessary part of a strategic fund development. It's it's what you have to do. But what my bigger problem is often is is what the foundations expect in terms of grant writing. They, they put so much into the administration of putting grants together, of administering the grants. Uh, it becomes it becomes tedious. So it's not that I don't mind pitching an idea to ask in request for some funding, but I would wish that the process was a little bit more focused on the actual projects as opposed to the putting together of a grant and the administration of said grant. What's your favorite part of your work? The connections and collaborations with the people. 
the, the projects are awesome and and the end product stuff like events or you know uh, the creative part creating things like this awesome but it's the actual people dealing with the people who are the non profiteers people who choose to be in this sector and be a part of community development awesome people where'd you get that hat Sherry Ann Designs, 48 West Philadelphia Street in beautiful York, Pennsylvania. Hey Sherry. Got the matching scarf too. What's the biggest struggle that executive directors face today? Executive directors need to be better in the people business. Uh, budgets, board retention, board recruitment, dealing with the board, uh, the budgetary process, fundraising, all these things executive directors will always have in their purview. But I believe that in this economy, in this sector, in the communities that I'm in right now, the number one problem that executive directors have is they're not, they're not protecting their people. The number one rule of leadership in a video I just did recently was talking about how a, a leader's number one role is to protect their people. Have your staff's back. Defend them, protect them, nourish them, shield them. And if an executive director is not doing that and everybody's just out on their own, Everybody's head down doing the work and nobody has their back. Everybody's going to feel threatened, worried, scared for their job. And uh, that never makes for good culture. Building a good culture with a good approach for an executive director in terms of leadership and protection of their staff and knowing staff members that know that they have their backs covered by a great ED, they'll stay with you. They'll work twice as hard and your organization will flourish. And then we will solve some problems in our community. What's your wife's name? My beautiful wife's name is Ms. Corey Aileen Warner Knight, and she is the best. Love you, K-Dub. Favorite current piece of technology that helps you work in the nonprofit sector? Well, I gotta tell you, I like Slack. It's an alternative to emails because emails are dreadful. So Slack, I think, helps a lot with uh, with team building and projects and all that kind of stuff. So definitely check that out. I also like Canva for design work because I'm not a designer, but it helps me design. And for my presentations, I use Prezi. I just think that's that's the best for presentation. Why does the nonprofit sector get such a bad rap sometimes? The answer is image and attitude. The nonprofit sector always thinks of itself as charity. And to me, charity suggests extra or after the fact. Uh, for donors, work all year and at the end of the year, give some money back. We aren't that. We are job creators. We are major parts of economic development. We're major parts of community development. We are the people that make things happen we stir the drink and whether it's in human services the arts and culture environment education anything non-profiteers are usually at the tip of the spear they're right in the middle of it in the dirt and making things happen so i think the sector in general just just needs an attitude adjustment we're no longer sort of subservient and please and begging for change and we are economic drivers we can drive a community to successes it has never seen before and I think once the sector realizes its strength, remember, we're the third largest sector in America. 11 million people a day wake up and work at a nonprofit organization. So th this idea that the nonprofit sector is sort of extra bonus charity, we, we aren't. We are a major component in our economic development. And once our leaders, once our political figures, once everybody who are influencers in our community realize that we are here to stay and we are making things happen, and once we as a sector realize that we can we can exude that kind of political push. We can exude that public policy push. I think we'll realize that we're better off than I think that a lot of people will realize. And most importantly, we're stronger than what even nonprofiteers think. That's why I do Nonprofit Power. Guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me again. I do appreciate it. I love doing these mailbags. I have to do these more often. So please, if you have a question for me, shoot me an email and ask away. Or better yet, you can ask questions on Twitter right here. Or you can go to the Connect the Dots Movement Facebook page right here and you can put a question there. And if I get a question from there that's interesting, maybe I'll do it in another mailbag segment. Thank you guys so much. I do appreciate it. My name is DK. I'm with Connect the Dots Movement. Keep on connecting, everyone. I'll see you around soon. Oh, while I'm in the uh, promotion mood here, uh, York City Pretzel Company, you got to come here when you come to York. It's the best place for pretzels. But you can get it online. Order it. Order it. Look, doobly do, right here. Order. You can order. Uh, they'll, they'll deliver. They're awesome. Get, buy pretzel.
I'm 